Biobalance HealthCast episode 198, Different Styles of Problem Solving. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week, Dr. Maupin and I are going to continue a conversation that we started last week about the process by which people make decisions in their lives and, and learn to be proactive and take responsibility for moving in a direction rather than, as, as I used to talk to people about in counseling, following a victim script. You know, life mm-hmm. just happens to me. Woe is me. Why does this always happen to me? And Charlie Brown. Uh, and some of us are wired that way. I mean, I know that there are some people I know very well that are, that are wired not maybe not hardwired, but they're trained absolutely to always do this step, this step, this step, and if you skip over a step, that disturbs them, you know, and that that bothers them. But sometimes it's better for for your health or better for the circumstance if you can skip over some steps, such as uh, my husband needed to have something done to his knee, and we had a time frame where we were going to to England. Okay, and uh, this is not to be criticizing him it's just that i see so far in advance i see way past style differences yeah it's a style difference i see what's going to happen in the time frame of how it's going to happen and you know he got an x-ray and then he or a mri and then then he waited for the answer and then he waited to see the doctor and instead of get, making all the appointments ahead so that he could get in right after the mri and it's things reactive. like that so so i i'm my advice of course is then nagging which is Please, let's do this all ahead of time so that if you need surgery on your knee, then you can have it before we go to England and do our, our book tour because we're going to be walking all the time. I don't want you to be in pain. Nope. I'm doing it step by step. And that's, but when. My doctor wants me to wait two weeks and see <laughs> if this is going to be helpful. Right. But then he changed his tune. Yeah. When he had a, he had a um, cervical vertebrae that, that needed to be fixed. He did what I said this time because it did cause him a lot of pain to so walk. What you're telling us is your husband's a fast learner. He learned. Yeah. He learned. So he he did what I asked him to do this time and and made all the steps go, we're, we're going to take care of that right now. We're not going to go through shots. And, and, of course, you were kind enough to say to him, what was the lesson learned? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of was. Listen to your wife. But, but it, I don't view it as, I mean, it is, I guess it's nagging to him. But for me, it's like. Let's just get you better so you can play golf again. Let's get you better yeah. so you can feel good again. And I'm kind of obviously impatient. <laughs> so that's probably what drives my my need to see forward. But I see, you know, I see someone who comes in the office and they have an abnormal blood sugar and their their triglycerides are up and they have 20 to 5 pounds too much weight on. And I'm like... That's diabetes just waiting to happen. Well, and that's, so that's an important I see point that ahead of You're time. You're impatient in your professional capacity about people who are in pain. Mm-hmm. You want to help them get better. You want to help them not be in pain. You want to help them avoid pain. You're not globally impatient no. uh, about anything and everything, and, and certainly not in your relationships. But when someone is in pain and you don't see a reason that they need to be in pain, mm-hmm. or, or you use pain as a signal, there's, you know, it's like, fire alarm going off something is wrong let's get to mm-hmm. the bottom of what's wrong let's deal with it now and fix the problem instead of just the symptom and so that's oftentimes that's another reason it's efficient to fix mm-hmm. the problem and not just keep treat the symptoms treating symptoms and if you can fix the problem that's not always possible mm-hmm. then that's that's the reason i find testosterone so efficient and such a good treatment because it fixes a lot of problems at once with one treatment it's very efficient and it prevents a lot of uh, illnesses happening in the future. So to me, that skips steps. We don't yeah. have to get sick. We don't have to wait till we get these things. We can prevent them. Yes. So it's the essence. To me, it's the essence of preventive <coughs> care, along with diet and exercise and the other uh, things that we have to do ourselves as human beings. But this can be something done for us. Well, so we're back to the question of being proactive. Are you one of those people who characterologically endures life Mm -hmm. and tends to see yourself as a victim of circumstances? Mm -hmm. Life just happened to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or are you one of those people that characterologically can look at a whole series of intersections and say, which path do I want to follow? Which Mm -hmm. road do I want to go down? 
Uh, if you are of the ilk that says, I would like to make some of the decisions and choose a path for me that's the best path I can arrange mm -hmm. to get the most out of life that I can get out of it for whatever my value system is, we have some suggestions in this podcast today for how to consider the question of, am I a candidate for hormone replacement and I'm particularly a candidate for testosterone replacement? So if you are beginning to either think about that yourself or be encouraged by others, those who love you, uh, your physicians, uh, to say, maybe we could consider this. Maybe we could look at this. Uh, we talked in our last, last podcast about the conversations we've had where people said, well, these are reasons that I don't think so. These are reasons that I'm not yet ready to move off the status quo. People tend to stay on the status quo for as long as they can, the way things are now, the status quo. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, change anything. Right. Even if I'm in pain, don't change anything. Right. Because it's not that bad. I can endure it. It takes time out of my schedule. It's something I have to make myself do. Uh, there are a lot of justifications for maintaining the status quo. That's easier quo. to do if you don't know what's going to happen if you ignore it. Right. So since, so you know. Part of why we're making that's these, why we're making we're making list. the list so so the first suggestion that i would make because it's the way i tend to think when a question like that comes up for me is get data you know i mm -hmm. i can i can chase my own tail in terms of running around in circles like a dog trying to just know something mm -hmm. or i can go and get information and so one of the things that you and I talk about regularly on these podcasts is that there's a huge amount of information that's out there on these topics. And research mm -hmm. has been done in different medical subspecialties. And if you go to that particular subspecialty, like the endocrine journals, mm -hmm. you can find the information. Mm -hmm. But the gynecologists tend not to know that. They don't see or anything. Or the internists in the tend not to know yeah, that. Yeah, and endocrine doesn't cross over to GYN. They don't use the research from another specialty in their specialty journal right and, so and they're so missing a lot if, if i am an internist i'm staying current on all the stuff that's my primary job and focus. i get those journals too and there's almost nothing on hormones there right nothing. so so what you have done in your office mm -hmm. is you've pulled together the research from uh, across the spectrum of uh medical specialties right. mm -hmm. and you've put those articles and books on the web uh, mm -hmm. at your site, which is mm -hmm. biobalancehealth.com. So there is a resource uh, page on biobalancehealth.com where people can go and read about the, the research that's been done on breast cancer, the mm -hmm. research that's been done on diabetes, the research that's been done on osteoporosis and osteo osteopenia. Because of copyright laws, right. we can't put the whole article on. No, but so you put we the put link. the reference or the link on that you can go to mm -hmm. see it. So. The most we could put on is an abstract without a copyright right. uh, infringement. So sometimes we'll have an abstract, which is just the, like the the little bit at the top that summarizes the article, or we just give you the name of the article and you can look it up yourself. But still, that's the data that's out there, and we keep updating it. In fact, right. I need to update it currently because I just added some things to my bibliot the the resource list. So that's something that will be updated on a regular basis. Now, uh, sometimes one one circumstance you didn't think about, and I hear it all the time, is I know my best friend has this. Right. They don't look at themselves, they're looking at their best friend. Or I know my mother has this and needs this help. Right. So sometimes you're looking at, at a problem for someone else. And in that case, or in your own case, going to the website, the Biobalance Health website, and going to new patients, it's a little drop down, and and filling out the questionnaire will help you know if you have uh, a problem with testosterone loss or est estrogen and testosterone loss by how many symptoms you have. Basically, if you have a lot of symptoms on there, then you or your loved one has those symptoms and they fill it out, then we'll call we'll we'll contact you and we can get blood work and and tell you whether you have that and then we can make an appointment for you as well but the or first half of this say this is not what if you, you don't have it about. we say that's that's not your problem right look in this area or that area and and we'll tell you usually where to go mm -hmm. if, unless you have nothing <laughs> Well, and, and so actually what often happens in that situation is people will fill that data out pretending they are their mother or their husband or their next door neighbor and then go and talk to their friend and say, look, I looked all this stuff up and you ought to consider this. 
-hmm. What they don't consider is filling it out for themselves. Right. Right. Sometimes you should look at it for yourself, too. Well, especially if you're you're looking at your mother or your father. You know, if if you've got a 72 year old mother and you're 50, then 22 years later, you're going to be looking at that. Yeah. If you don't do anything different differently, then you will be that person. And if you find that to be a problem, then or a combination of the two people, then you find that to be a problem, then you should do something now so that that doesn't happen. You can't just. That's the other thing. Everybody goes, well, when something happens, I'll do something about it. Well, when once you have terrible osteoporosis, it's really hard to build muscle back even with testosterone. I mean, build bone back even with testosterone. Right. I mean, it takes a long time. So, you know, wait till, till your bones are breaking before you treat it. And testosterone treats it very well. So does estrogen. So you don't wait until you can't walk to try to get your muscle back. That doesn't work. No. No, it may be too late then. It may be too late then. So even though we treat people of all ages, there's just at certain stages of life, there's so many things that you can get back and so many things you can't. There are optimal windows. And it's much better to start when you lose the hormone and replace it and keep going with it than to wait until some critical issue happens. You can't get out of a wheelchair to start the testosterone. If you're one of those women, and I've personally heard thousands of them say this through the Mm -hmm. years, who say, I'm not going to be like my mother. Oh, I've said that And that too. means that across a whole spectrum of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but physiological illnesses might yeah. be one of right. that spectrum. You mm-hmm. know, I don't want to be in a wheelchair or a walker or not going out anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a 96-year-old neighbor who never comes out anymore. I mean, we take well, meals to her. after 96. I mean, she didn't come out on the porch anymore. She, oh. She's not ready to go live somewhere else where there's assisted living. Mm-hmm. But she she plans her one day uh, once a day trip to the front door to pick up her mail and papers, which we've put in a bag on mm-hmm. her doorknob. You know, so the neighbors kind of take, take care, care of her and check mm-hmm. in on her, and, and so she's on. She's lucky to have you. But uh, but you don't want to be you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that limited. Um, and no one no one wants to be that. But that's what happens when you when life happens. And they didn't know about this. Way back when, my so it's not that. The, it's not a. My mother was diabetic and very limited in her capacity, she's overweight, and she lived alone in a farmhouse in the country. And she had a path from her couch to her sink to her bathroom, and the rest of the house just gradually deteriorated around her, and nobody realized it because she was isolated. She didn't have neighbors like mm-hmm. we have, and we eventually found out she was living that way and put her in a home. A couple of weeks went by and she called. She said, I'm so happy to be here. There are people to talk to. We can play cards. We, mm-hmm. you know, we do things. They check on me. And it's like, Mom, that could have happened five years ago. Right. You know? Right. But they don't see themselves deteriorating. So sometimes right. it's the job of the of the family to do that. But one of the things I, I think that I hear all the time and then I think, well, why don't you do something about it? People will say, Well, I don't go skiing anymore and I don't play right. tennis anymore and I play golf, but it's not so good and I can't hit it very far and I'm having trouble playing without mm-hmm. a cart on, on the uh, fairway. I can't, I can't play on days when we have to walk to our carts, you know? Right. So, you know, even if it's just, you can't go skiing anymore, you need to think about that. Why can't you go skiing anymore? Can't you go skiing because you don't have the muscle strength to go skiing or is it because your joints have, gotten so dry without testosterone that well and the classic answer is well, that's just what happens when you get old that's the way it's supposed to be i know but that's not the way our generation thinks it should be i right. mean our generation thinks and it we should be live health at, in a healthy way right not that that's turning out that way but that's what we thought when we were mm-hmm. in the 70s mm-hmm. that we were going to live a long time and well yes. and be happy i have so many people come in and say i didn't know my sex drive was going to go away at 40 I mean, that's a short light, you know, 20 years of sex, really? You know, they they were, they're they're appalled, you know, but that this could happen. But that's like just one of the first changes. Right. But muscles and bones and everything else deteriorating are another change. And so if you you don't swim or you don't do some of the things that you used to do, hike or go to the mountains or do. And being pre-diabetic, you know, recognizing there's an end to your insulin tolerance. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to limit sugar or take medicine or something if you don't make changes further down the trail. That's right. I mean, you're just it, diabetes really just doesn't end unless you're early in in diabetes or or type two diabetes, which is the obesity diabetes. If you're early in that, 
then you can lose weight and you can uh, improve your insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. and that you can be without diabetes. Well, they'll say you're still diabetic, but you manage it with diet and exercise. You're not taking Maybe, medicines. Maybe, but you're not. The, the numbers came off, yeah. but we call it numbers are gone. Yeah. You know, the numbers went away. So, so those are things that we can help in the early stages. So you don't want to wait till you weigh 300 pounds and then you're on a ton of insulin. I was just short of that. <laughs> right. So a couple of other things that we would suggest you do in terms of uh, evaluating, is this something that I proactively ought to consider? Mm -hmm. One is read our book. I mean, mm -hmm. we wrote our book carefully to be a survey of the data for all the different symptoms that people complain about mm -hmm. as part of a bigger picture. Right. And and in their last podcast, I used the analogy of a pointless painter who paints by dots. Or if you look at a photo in a newspaper or in a book, those are just single individual dots if you blow them up close enough to see them. But if you pull back, they merge into a pattern mm -hmm. that your brain recognizes and sees as, as a photograph or a picture. And that's what we tried to do with the so book. So we tried to do that with the book. Is to put it and together in a big, in a large scale so that you can see the whole picture and not just one symptom at a time. And there are checklists throughout the book that say, do you suffer from this? Do you suffer from this? Does it look like this? Does it feel like that? And if it does, then these are the things you ought to do. And Another thing that I, I hear all the time, this is like at the beauty shop or wherever, mm -hmm. Did I call them that anymore? Anyway, <laughs> I, I still do. I obviously wouldn't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, but everybody thinks that the only thing that happens to you, to women, mm -hmm. and the only issue that has to do with menopause is that you get hot flashes. Mm -hmm. And if they can take something to get their hot flashes to go right. away, then that's the end of the deal. Then you fixed yourself. Mm -hmm. And hot flashes are disturbing, and they, they impair your life if you have them badly, and sometimes they don't go away unless you take estrogen. But if you can take estradiol, you should take it as a bioidentical. And testosterone will also help hot flashes, will also suppress them. But that's not the only thing that has a, that menopause does to you or that even before menopause, when testosterone goes away, does to you. It is an entire aging process. And that's, that's something more than just taking a little bit of estrogen cream here and there, which doesn't give you a blood level to help your bones or help your brain or, or help your skin. It's, it's more than that. You need to have both testosterone and estrogen. And obviously, if you have a uterus, you need to have progesterone as well to protect it. But those are the two primary hormones. And there are all kinds of symptoms that are related to this that you don't even think are related to it, like getting out of bed. And you hurt. Right. You hurt all over when you get out of bed. Your feet hit the floor, and and your knees hurt. Your your whole body aches. That has to do and with lack of testosterone and estrogen. Straighten up and and be fluid in your movements. Well, think about it. If you have that, that's not just oh aging. It is aging, but right. it's secondary to a hormone loss. And testosterone and estrogen together for women, and testosterone for men will will remedy that. That's just one of the points. It, it's like thinking of it as a gatekeeper hormone. It keeps the gate closed on a whole lot of illnesses of mm -hmm. aging that start to happen. Either closed permanently, you never get them, or closed longer, it, it's much later in the cycle Delays of aging it. before you get it. Mm -hmm. So we would ask you to consider that. So if one way to do that is reading our book. Another way to do that is go on Kathy's website and look at the testimonials of people that have done it and have been satisfied about it who want to tell you how satisfied mm -hmm. they are about it, uh, that they've found it to be life-changing for them. Mm -hmm. And they're happy to share that information for you so that you can consider. And these are not paid testimonials. These, no. are, these are genuine testimonials of people that have received the treatments and want to say, thank you, Dr. Maupin. And, mm -hmm. and my wife was in your office the other day and, and came home and said, this man came in and grabbed the whole office's attention when Kathy passed through and said, you saved my life. And had to tell everybody how it was that you saved mm -hmm. them. I mean, the, he was the, so happy. He was really so happy. And they become believers. They experience it. Mm -hmm. So, so an additional possibility. Once you've done all that, and you think, well, I don't. Know, I just don't know. I can't make up my mind. I would suggest you personally try it. Try it once or twice, preferably mm -hmm. twice, because you need to adjust the dosage to make sure you get the right amount. But if you try it twice you'll have a real good basis for making a proactive decision. I don't need this right now, or I do need this, and I want to continue to do it, uh, or I want to look somewhere else. I honestly didn't know. When I when I first started pellets, 
you know, over 12 years ago, I had no idea how bad I felt. Yeah. I mean, I knew that I needed my hormones back, but I had no idea of all the symptoms and they're all in there. Now we've backed them up with research, but Sometimes you don't know it hurts until it stops right? (laughs) because you adjust. (laughs) Right. Like migraines. I didn't know they were because I didn't have any testosterone. Right. They started at 38. They got worse after my hysterectomy and that was a lack of testosterone. They're gone. I haven't had any. Now, a lot of people forget what they've, what what they have been cured of. So we, Mm -hmm. we have to go through the symptoms that they came in with to make sure that everything's staying, staying the same. Why don't you run through some of the symptoms that people talk about real quick before we run out of time? They talk about... I, I have no energy. I can't get up in the morning. I don't feel like going to work. I don't sleep. I don't have restful sleep. When, mm-hmm. I, when I do sleep, I don't feel rested mm-hmm. in, in the morning. I, my mental process is gone. I can't remember names. I can't remember labels. I can't. I can't uh, my kids tell me that I'm getting stupid. Or my kids make fun of me because I can't remember things, which is, I mean, it, that's the description of the symptom, but it's a memory well, and that issue. That last one could be because you're suffering from testosterone deficiency, or it could be because your kids have gotten to be 13. Well, that's true, but usually they're a little yeah. older than 13. <laughs> I've had people come in, come in and say, my job's at risk. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose my job if I don't I'm get... I'm not as sharp. I can't finish things. I can't, you know, it's not just a, it's not ADD. It's lack of hormone to get their brain going or they can't sell anymore. Their sales, they, they've lost their motivation to go out there. They just, yeah. they're like immobilized. Yes. And, and none of those things individually cause an alarm to go off to say testosterone. Right. Uh, they, they look for some other explanation. Uh, is it osteoporosis? Is it depression? Is it dementia? Mm-hmm. Am I getting Alzheimer's? And they may find one. And a regular um, doctor's looking for diseases that might kill you. And right. I'm looking for symptoms that are are Qual- signs of, of diseases later mm-hmm. that actually we can treat and prevent the disease ahead of time right. with the replacement of hormones. So it's a different way to look at things. So the... The end result is that you need to be a participant in your medical decision making, and you need to get information so that you can make a good proactive decision for yourself and not just reactively drift along until bad things happen in your life. So we would encourage you to get the information, to digest that information, to talk to your physician about the information that you get. Another good thing to do with the charts that are in our book or the questionnaires that are in our book, take those to your doctor and say, this is what I am aware of. Can you help me? As always, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.